Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N's Robot Review, in partnership with RoboCube, your destination for everything STEM. This week I'm going to be doing some further explorations with Dash. Let's check it out. Firstly, a big thank you to RoboCube for supporting this video and supporting the channel from a way near the very start. You can check them out at robocube.co.uk where you can buy most of the robots that I have featured on my channel so far. Last week I had a look at the Wonder app which can be used with Wonder Workshops Dash. I've put a link in the description for you to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Now I'm going to explore the Blockly app with Dash. When you first open up the Blockly app, you'll need to push the orange button in the top right hand corner with a white cross in it, and this is to tell the app to pair itself to your Dash robot. Once the app has searched and found your robot and connected, you are ready to go, and it will automatically open up some challenges for you to start completing. I've already done a couple of the challenges, but I'm just going to go back into the start to give you an idea of what these are like. And also, you can't do some other things on the app until you've completed that first challenge. The first challenge in the app is called Driving School, and the idea of these challenges is to introduce you to block coding. So if you're not familiar with block coding, this is a brilliant way to start, and it's also a great way for teachers to introduce block coding to their pupils. Because it is self-guided, pupils are able to work through it at their own speed. That means more confident pupils are able to just keep going and working through the challenges, allowing the teacher to be able to support those that are a bit more confused about the coding. The great thing about these challenges is it tells you exactly what you need to do. And driving school starts off by introducing some very basic blocks, like getting Dash to say hi, getting Dash to drive forward or drive backwards. You see Dash is even turning its head and then turning its body. There are lots of different things that driving school gets you to build up. If you put in any bit of coding which is incorrect for what it is asking you to do, it is not going to run the code and it will also highlight in red the part of the coding that has gone wrong. This means that you're able to quickly change it. Now, if you've got people who are familiar with block coding like I am, that is great, but you still need to complete the first challenge before you have any chance of getting creative with the block coding. There's also something else to be aware of. Usually with block coding languages, to delete a block, you drag it off to the left hand side. With the Blockly app however, you need to drag unwanted blocks down into a bin in the right hand corner. So a slight change there, but other than that, the blocks work exactly the same as any other block coding you may have encountered. While I've been explaining all this, you've seen I've been working through that first challenge just to give you an idea of how it builds up the complexity for pupils. Obviously, if you work through all the challenges on the app, it's going to build up a wider knowledge of blocks. But once that first challenge is done, you can then start getting creative. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. Here you see we have the option of puzzles, which I've just been referring to as challenges, my projects and assignments. If you tap on assignments, it's going to come up a message box saying you require Class Connect. This is a way for teachers to assign a challenge to pupils for them to get creative and use their problem solving skills using the block coding. I'm now going to tap on my projects to show you what can be found in there. You'll see there's the option of create new and then under that there's a couple of the puzzles that I have already done. When I tap on create new, you'll see that I've got a dotted line circle spinning around blank project. But next to that and under it, and if I keep scrolling down, you will see there are lots of different projects that have already been created. These are a way for pupils to tap in and see existing code and see how Dash moves in different ways. For example, if I tap on the one called Snake, this has a whole load of programming involved in it. When I tap on the play button, Dash is going to start to move slowly, weaving side to side like a snake. But Dash is also programmed that if it detects a blockage in front of it, it is going to reconfigure itself to then move in another direction. These projects give pupils the opportunity to see how Dash can be coded to move and act in different ways, and they're then able to learn different bits of coding through reading through the projects here. 
This is going to be better for pupils who have worked through more of the challenges so they understand what the block coding means, but it's another way for pupils to explore what Dash can do. When I select blank project and hit on create, you see it opens up a coding page just like we saw there with the snake and like we saw in the challenges, only there are no blocks in here apart from the when start block. Down the left hand side there are all the different options for types of blocks that you can use with Dash and this links back to the Wonder app because it's got things there like our sounds and our movements for pupils to tap into and then drag out the appropriate coding blocks. The Blank Project is an excellent opportunity for parents and teachers to be able to create their own challenges for their children or pupils to be able to complete with Dash. This could be things like having to drive Dash round a maze or dodge different obstacles. This is where parents and teachers can get creative and force the pupils or children to be creative and work on their problem solving skills while exploring what the different blocks do. Now there are different ways you could set things up if you were doing a maze. You could actually measure out the distances that you want Dash to travel or you could just set it up and see what pupils come up with and they have to figure out the distances. You can change the distances that Dash is moving forward and this is all measured in centimetres so you can actually bring a lot of maths into this. You can get children to actually measure out the distances that are involved in the maze for example before they actually do any coding with Dash. So if they measure from the start line to the first turn as 40 centimetres they know they need to set Dash's distance to travel 40 centimetres to reach that first turn. You can also bring a lot to do with angles into the coding because you can change the degrees of turn that Dash needs to move. What I've been setting up for Dash is just a really simple set of driving forwards and turning 90 degrees in different directions. But when I get to the final bit, I'm actually going to code Dash to drive forward further than it has at any other point, but also on the right hand side there I'm going to change the speed so Dash is going to go as fast as it can and smash into those pins to hopefully knock all five of them down and get a strike. Dash is quite a chunky weighty robot so I don't think it's going to have any issues getting the strike. Now that the coding's set up, I'm going to hit play and let's watch Dash go through that sequence. And there we go, Dash gets a strike. That was just a very simple bit of coding. I'm quite competent with block coding so I could play with Dash and make up more complex things but I'm quite restricted with the space that I've got here at home and when I'm using my son's playroom he's got lots of toys and different things round about that I also need to try and avoid. But if you have a bigger space, especially in a school, you can get really creative with what you want Dash to do. Dash should also be able to recognise the surface it's driving on, whether it's a hard smooth surface or driving on carpet and the robot should move appropriately so you could even test having Dash driving from one surface onto another or through a series of different surfaces and see how the robot responds. There really is no end to the creativity that you can have with Dash using this Blockly app or even the Wonder app that I looked at previously. It's all down to your imagination, creativity and problem solving skills. Well that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. Once again a huge thank you to Robocube for sending me Dash to allow me to make this video. I'm hoping to make more videos with the different apps that you can use with this robot as well as with Dash's counterpart robot Dot which Robocube have also sent me. Be sure to check Robocube out at robocube.co.uk where you can purchase Dash, Dot and most of the other robots I've covered on my channel. As always I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to my other robot review videos, here to my STEM exploration and explanation videos and here to my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N with further exploration of Dash. <laughs>